Let's roll. We've got a, a solid quorum here, and I think we'll record it anyway for people who missed the beginning. Perfect. Amazing. Well, first of all, let me welcome uh, the community on the call. Uh, my name is Hervé Loren. I'm uh, one of the seven Horizon Special Counsel. Um, and not only as a community member, but as a special counsel uh, with Horizon, uh, we thought it was uh, important to have uh, this call um, today uh, to discuss um, a few of the topics that has been uh, brought um, forward by, by the community. And uh, for this, we will have uh, Rob um, and Gustavo, uh, who will be uh, answering a, a certain numbers of, of questions. Um, and without further ado, Rob, you don't need int any introductions, but uh, as a formality, if you can please uh, uh, introduce yourself, followed by, by Gustavo, and we'll kick it off with uh, a number of questions. Thanks, Hervé. Thanks for uh, the, the kind words for kicking this off and for doing it in the first place. Uh, everyone, I'm Rob. I am one of the co-founders of Horizon, also the CEO of Horizon Labs. Uh, really happy to be here, despite the you know supposed the kind of volatile circumstances around um, messaging, and, and really the only thing that's really volatile is the messaging. So my main point for, for being here today is to just clarify as much as we possibly can to make people realize just a very simple fact that. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. Horizon Labs is not going anywhere. And you still have a massively successful company with a ton of resources and amazing talent devoted to this ecosystem. So as that, that'll be my theme as the, the conversation unfolds and the, the Q&A comes in from the community. We're not going anywhere. And we've got a phenomenal team that's dedicated to this ecosystem. Uh, my background, guys, uh, if, if um, you know that matters much, is I, I was uh, in my early days a physicist, mathematician, then went back to academia for my PhD. I was an early Bitcoiner, and I, I've just been really passionate about um, building out this ecosystem. And by ecosystem, I mean beyond Horizon. Even I'm talking about what was originally just only Bitcoin when I got started in this industry and is today called Web3. Uh, and specifically within Web3 is this phenomenal Horizon project and community and team and everything. So I, I'm committed to this, guys, and you know, bringing uh, experience, resources, and uh, a commitment from my team to bear in this community. Anyway, so long intro as I normally do for those of you guys who know me, uh, but wanted to get all that up front right away. And I'll pass it over to Gustavo, who has been with us from the absolute beginning and was one of the earliest community members to kick off this project. And hello, everyone. So I'll give a brief introduction. So thank you all for being here. My name is Gustavo. I'm the Horizon Foundation Program Manager. And one of my roles is to oversight the governance aspect of the DAO and also serve as one of the primary contact points of the community. I've been a long time supporter and collaborator of the project. And with that said, I think we are going through challenging times and I look forward to all the discussion around the recent events. And I'll pass it back to you, Harvey. Yeah, so, so let me start off with some uh, general questions and uh, that resolve about, the, about the, the new tokenomics uh, of Horizon. So, so maybe a, a question for, for both of you, um, which is how, how does the new tokenomics model expand opportunities for the Horizon ecosystem? Uh, maybe Rob, if you want to take this question first, and then we can pass it to Gustavo. Yeah, no, okay. And maybe I'll, I'll give a little context into the background here. Uh, the background is, um, you know, we've been building out this, and by way, Horizon Labs has been building out this new Horizon concept uh, for the last four months or so, uh, and we're moving really fast on it. We're already on testnet, and now we're out there pitching it to the world, pitching it to you know a variety of Web three. Uh, funds, pitching it to exchanges already, market makers, pitching it to, um, you know, ultimately the users of, of this ecosystem. So other ZK projects, and we're getting enormous interest in what we're doing. But the same consistent message is that's awesome, but the tokenomics you know, are old. The tokenomics are for privacy coin from 2017 that's two thirds mined. How is that relevant? You know, you've got one third of a token supply left to optimize for this brand new function of ZK proof verification. So ultimately we had this constraint and, you know, I, I'm sort of a stubborn guy, which, you know, for months I was ignoring it. 
and just pushing forward because like I'm, I'm a horizon guy and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, build out this ecosystem and make this ecosystem important and relevant in web three. Um, but what changed my opinion recently of like, just, we need to get back to the drawing board to think, okay, well, how do we really optimize here? And how do we like maximize value for the ecosystem? Uh, and by value, I mean, actual functional value. I'm not talking token price um, because we have, like many, we're not many, we, we have a few really um, important competitors entering exactly the ZK proof verification business. So they're launching projects that will directly compete with us and they're moving fast. There's a few of them. They're raising a ton of money. And uh, even recently there was a VC that was going to back us who ended up switching to the other guys because they have brand new token tokenomics. And like the important thing here is that um, you have technology that ultimately leads towards a purpose and a product function for doing something, in our case, ZK proof verification. And then you have tokenomics. Tokenomics are supposed to match or you know, match the function of what you're doing and optimize and turbocharge that function. So when we're talking about forcing an old token and old tokenomics to a new function, that's fine if we were living in a vacuum, but we're not. And I realize now that we have a few really fierce competitors who I respect greatly and I want to outcompete them guys. I want to outcompete them for, for horizon for this ecosystem. So that was the, all the background here. Um, I will conclude this, this, uh, you know, this part by saying that no matter which direction we go, it's to maximize the value of this horizon ecosystem guys. So we can talk about slicing, dicing tokens or whatever, one token, multiple tokens. It, you know, I, not, not to be callous and say it doesn't matter, but the main point is we figure it out of what's going to maximize total ecosystem value. And then we parse it out that way. So, so that, that's, uh, that's my long answer, Herve. So Gustavo, I don't think if you have, um, I don't know if you have anything to, to add on this. Uh, I'll have my like personal opinion, but uh, as liaison of the community, I think, uh, yeah, ultimately it's up to the community to decide. Perfect. So, so Rob, let, let me let me follow up with with another question. What, why is Zen, in its current form, uh, not a suitable coin for a modular blockchain? Uh so it's okay. So it, it's really just a matter of um, there. There's two thirds of the Zen supply that's been mined already, and there's one third left to go. Um, so it would be like just think about the counterfactual guys and say. I'm going to launch a new project from scratch to do X or call it to, to do ZK proof verification. And I'm going to pre-mine the token by two thirds and just hand it out. And then there'll be one third of the token left for optimizing the success of the ecosystem. That's exactly it. And that's exactly what we're talking about here is we're launching what the world is excited about. And you know, even just from some of the comments on Telegram recently, People get it. They understand that ZK is an important technology for this industry. It's exploding, and the cost of proof verification is a meaningful uh, target to provide a service to lower that cost, right? And just going out there in the market on the BD side and seeing how quickly we're getting projects to sign up to work with us is amazing. But we're talking about launching this project, launching this, this new technology, this upgraded blockchain with one-third of the token supply available to actually... Uh, pursue the success of of that um, platform. It just doesn't make sense, right? So, um, like, there's there's uh, huge value in the community that we have. There's huge value in our exchange listings, the Grayscale product, and all these things. We all recognize that. Um, so, the key here is to not kill one for the other, but at the same time, not destroy our chances of actually succeeding and competing. And this new this new project area of zk proof verification because we're going to be competing against other guys who are launching new tokens where 100 percent of the token supply is going towards incentives for people to use it and to reward those participants right so how do we compete with that when we have one third of the token supply to match it so that's that's the dilemma and that's what i mean specifically everybody by the tokenomics not matching the the new function and Rob, as a follow-up, can you can you touch on some of the conversation that you've been having around recommending either a brand new token or a revised Zen with new tokenomics? Yeah, so here's where I'll, I'll um, just repeat what Gustavo said, because I, I agree with it, is ultimately it's going to be what the community 
uh, thinks is best, right? So ultimately the community is going to decide we have a DAO. That's the whole point of this. And that's why we're having this conversation just versus unilaterally just picking what we think is best. Um, so there's there's probably many options of, of where to go here. We have one option where we do nothing and we just have, uh, we deliver New Horizon for the current Zen token and we have one third of the token supply left for the rest of, you know, I don't know, the next hundred years to try to make that platform a success. I, I can tell you now, it won't be a success if we do that because we're competing with at least three, probably more very fierce competitors who will have 100% of their token supplies that VCs are gobbling up right now, dedicated towards making those platforms that are competing with us a success. So that's option one. I don't like it. Uh, as much as I, I, I will like it for, um, you know, the, the old Zen holders of which I am, you know, probably the oldest uh, and Horizon Labs, the biggest supporter of Zen. Um, it's it's kind of, we're shooting ourselves in the foot by doing that. There are a couple of other options. Um, so there's one option, which would be, and, and other ecosystems have done this. They've uh, basically swapped out tokens. So they've had an old token that's been around for years and swapped it into a new one uh, for some new new function, new purpose, new ecosystem. I, I mean, your new, new pivot to an ecosystem. That's another option. And then there's airdropping. There's, okay, we can just make this a completely like parallel ecosystem. Maybe it's still under the, the horizon umbrella, but it has a completely different chain, different token, and we airdrop it. Um, so in a way, that's kind of what we were originally thinking with Eon as a platform. Eon runs on horizon and it could have had its own token, Eon token. It's still, you know, something that's been discussed within the community. Some like it, some don't. Um, but we've got at least three options on the table. Uh, and they have different implications for them, and like really, they're they're all on the table. Maybe before getting into the the community questions, uh, Gustavo, a question for you in terms of of process. Um, can, can you um, remind and review the, the the process to follow when submitting uh, a Zen IP? Um, you know, can, can you outline the process going from? Uh, an actual idea to to an IP to a Zen IP. Sure, that's a good question, Harvey. So here goes a brief overview of the whole process. So I'll start to say that the process is open to anyone, and first it uh, should start from a research phase, just to make sure the proposal is unique and follows all the guidelines. And after the research phase is concluded, you should post the proposal idea on the discourse forum. And this step is moderated by me and Menon, our Horizon Foundation community manager. And if everything is according to the guidelines, the proposal is approved and it's posted publicly on the forum and it's open for community feedback. And only after the community has its say, so after the community feedback, if the feedback is positive, then the proposal transitions to a draft stage. And in this stage, it will go through a final administrative review by the special counsel. And if needed, the special counsel may request further clarifications or revisions of the proposal. And after this step, we finally get into the snapshot and the proposal gets voted or and the proposal either passes and goes into implementation stage or it fails and just dies. And that's the whole life cycle of ZNIP. And I'll pass it back to you, Harvey. Perfect. Thank you so much, Gustavo. Um, Rob, let me dive in on some of the community questions that um, that we gathered. The, the first one, there, there was a, 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 a Zen IP posted by Outerlands Capital. Um, can you clarify what is the um, Outerlands, Outerlands Capital relationship with Horizon and, uh, and why is their involvement significant now? Sure. Um, so uh, Horizon, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Outerlands is uh, a spinoff from Horizon Labs. It was, uh, we built out an internal finance investment team because we have, uh, you know, a reasonably sized balance sheet that we wanted to manage. And we, we just started hiring some phenomenal people that were actually building out um, internal technology for managing a digital asset portfolio that was, uh, I think added it would be more valuable spun out of Horizon Labs than just retained internally. So anyway, we spun out this this group. Um, Outerlands is now uh, its own independent company that's um, building out. I, I think one of the most exciting companies in in the digital asset management space because one, there's just a lot of really smart people, but two, they're building out exactly the kinds of products that I think the industry needs, and uh, they're doing it in a very intelligent, uh, thoughtful way. 
anyway, that, that's my little plug on Outerlands is that like these guys are literally PhDs in finance economics and, you know, um, come from tremendous investment and in, in finance backgrounds. So they, the idea of this Zenip idea that was posted was literally to um, like this was a favor that these guys were going to do because they're also deeply co committed to this ecosystem because they spun out from it um, to to help literally to help to you know put together uh, some analysis and do a, a quick study to see you know come up with a few different options of which paths we have available for us as a community and which ones then they would recommend and to make all of this transparent and visible to everyone so they can go to the DAO so that we can vote on it. Now, it kicked off a complete storm of activity, I think, because um, one, like people just didn't realize who is our lands, what relationship do they have here? Well, these guys are deeply committed to Zen. Literally, the guy who runs our lands, Colin Jones, is, was at the Zen Cash launch party back in 2017. So he's been with us literally from the beginning. Um, and this was their offer to help. This wasn't for money or for anything like that. This was they wanted to lend some of their brain power and their experience and expertise to to try to help this community. Another question, Rob, what, what, how will the new economic model based on the modular blockchain complement Zen and what adjustments to the airdrop proportion and incentives for Zen holders and contributors are planned to balance interests? Look, I, I mean, the the first point is uh, I, I wish I could provide complete uh, clarity here and certainty. The, the real answer is, again, just like Gustavo said, uh, this needs to go through a community process. This isn't me. Like I, I'm going to be very vocal, and I have been about my opinions. And take it for what it's worth, guys. I've been in this industry for longer than most people, and I have a PhD in finance, right? So I, I, I've, I've been there and done that, and uh, and I understand tokenomics to some extent. Um, so not to throw around a bunch of credentials, but I'm going to be loud about what my my opinion is, and I don't want you to think that I'm just making this stuff up, you know, for the sake of it. Uh, now, of course. Uh, at the end of the day, everyone needs to make a decision on does what I'm saying make sense or not. So I, I am that prelude just to say um, there are options on the table and there's I will have an opinion, but nothing is definitive until we have a DAO vote and the DAO decides which direction we're going to go ultimately. So one of the options on the table was to have you know an airdrop. Uh, and this was because there seemed to be a hard constraint in the community on changing the the, the Zen supply. And right now it's at a, a cap to 21 million Zen. And there's just this very hard sentiment of never changing that. It's fine, but it, it's not fine for modular blockchain that is, is launching from scratch here. Um, so we have this constraint. And if we're not going to change the supply of Zen, then there has to be some sort of other token that's complementary to it or whatever. Now, I think if we go that route, there really should be a very large um, airdrop to the Zen community. And, and that was my point all along, is I think that there should be a substantial airdrop. I'm not talking a few percentage points. I'm talking, you know, like a very large double-digit percentage of the initial supply of whatever other token there would be out there. Again, that's just one option, and maybe that's my preferred option. I'm not sure. I want to see them all on the table, and that's that was the point of the Outerlands uh, Zen IP idea was to start cultivating options so that we can talk about them. Now, finally, I will say we got to move fast, guys. We can't be deliberating on this for months. Like this is the kind of thing that we need to move with urgency because our competitors are not stopping; they're coming for us, and I want to be ready for them. I really want to win this market segment, and you know, I think we need to move very fast to do that. Just a question on the airdrop. If if there's an airdrop, will it be on the Zen blockchain or will it be on a separate token not related to Zen in any way? I mean, it would be related to Zen because there'd be an, like a large airdrop to Zen holders. But no, like the the whole point of New Horizon guys was to upgrade the old technology. Um, so it doesn't make sense to you know, launch this this modular blockchain project is already in development and we're moving fast and it's already on testnet. Uh, it's on test. The first milestone is on testnet. The second milestone is being delivered in, in the next, I don't know, six weeks or something like that. Uh, and then we're going to have one more milestone delivery after that quickly. And by the end of the summer, 
uh, or even before the end of the summer, I think by the end of July is when we're thinking about locking it down after the third milestone delivery and getting that ready for mainnet. Um, so no, like that's based on a substrate blockchain framework. That's completely different from the Bitcoin core code base that Horizon's currently built on. So no, it, it makes no sense to you know, say drop that and let's just build, you know, on the the Bitcoin uh, code base that we have right now. Um, so we're moving forward with that other code base now. Does does code base mean it's not related to Zen? Absolutely not, uh, guys. the The whole point here is to have a major airdrop so that it is related to this ecosystem. Absolutely. And then we could talk about what comes next. What comes next for Zen? What comes next for upgrading the ecosystem? Do we migrate this component of it into the the, the modern version on Substrate? I mean, I, I don't know, but I I'm I could say we're deeply committed to making sure that we're not just doing an airdrop and then Zen dies. That's the last thing on my mind. Um, so the, the, whichever direction we end up going here, I, I want just a clear vision that makes sense. And I've heard a lot of suggestions um, in some of these chat groups or chat rooms that, that make absolutely no sense. All right, so I, I'm not going to support something just for the sake of it. And I want a clear, clean vision that makes sense so that Zen actually matters in Web3 for the next 100 years. That, that's the point of all of this, guys. So that we don't become irrelevant and the project just dies off. And what what is the airdrop plan? Do we have a schedule around that? And how will the airdrop be distributed to Zen owners? There will be uh, some kind of specific ratio. Uh, so no, we don't have a plan because remember there, there's at least a few different options, and one of the options that uh, I, I think is also extremely attractive is is a token swap. Um, so whether we do token swap or we do airdrop, I mean, ultimately, it's economically equivalent. We just make sure that there's a very large percentage of the new supply that goes to Zen holders and, um, you know, go from there. But the, the mechanics are still TBD, guys. And how will Horizon remain competitive and relevant in the market, particularly with the proposed changes and the ongoing challenges in performance compared to other projects? Yeah, so the, the most interesting thing that we have going on as an ecosystem is the ZK proof verification. But hands down, the most interesting thing that we have going on. It's an idea that, you know, finally, I would say after after some time, has product market fit, just in the sense of um, like tons of VCs are interested. That's kind of like an early leading indicator. Not that VCs are everything, but hey, these are, are people that see everything in the industry and they can evaluate many different projects. And you know what we're doing is extremely attractive. Um, but two, on the BD side, we're getting so many other ZK projects, whether they're complementary projects like hardware accelerators, like coprocessors, or whether they're you know prover networks, or whether they're actually ZK rollups that want to, uh, or ZK DApps that want to work with us and actually run on the the new Horizon like proof verifier. So there, there's a ton of. Um, ton of interest in what we're doing and right now it's just a matter of converting that interest into the, the rational ecosystem structure um so that's the most important thing that we're doing and, and then i think that we need to race with that guys we need to actually be competitive and win that market segment because this is the opportunity for our ecosystem to truly matter in web3 today and to truly matter for the next 5 10 plus years right with just this one modular service that we're talking about rolling out to the market because zk is exploding we get zk we've been there in zk since 2017 guys this is our opportunity to take that run with it in a way that actually matters now um, that's that's the most important thing and then the next thing is we're not we're not going to kill zen we're not going to you know uh, you know uh, run it into the ground so there has to be a rational transition here What's that going to look like? Is it going to be an airdrop and then some other vision for it? Is it going to be a token swap like some others in the community are recommending? I don't know. But this is where we need to have these discussions without panic, without fear, you know, the, the our old friend FUD, and just figure out what's the best, best path forward. Because unambiguously, we are delivering something soon, like real soon. I, I was, you know, what I'm talking about with this proof, proof verification system is being delivered soon. Uh, into this market, that's a big deal. And we are going to capitalize on that as an ecosystem because Horizon is going to matter for that quite a bit. We just need to figure out how we're going to parse this out, which strategy we're going to have for um, you know, bringing that value into the ecosystem and making sure that you know, the community members who have been with us for all of these years are taken care of. You know, uh, 
we're, we're all community members. We're all in this together. Another question from the community, Rob, how is the project addressing concerns about the long-term value and credibility of Zen, especially giving the potential for changes to the blockchain's infrastructure? Yeah, I, I'll say um, the credibility of a horizon is based on whether or not we take consistently rational actions to be relevant in Web3. So we can all have our different perspectives on this. My perspective is if we just keep Zen the way it is on an old technology stack without a clear purpose, uh, it's not going to be competitive. It's going to become irrelevant. And over time, it fades into nothing. Now, when we launched in 2017, we had a variety of different competitors. And like Zen's around today, those other competitors aren't. Um, so we've done some things right and we've done, done some things wrong. And I, I've made this clear as well when we posted that Zen IP to transition to New Horizon, that what we were working on with our sidechain system just was not competitive relative to others that are already out there on the market, like Cosmos and Polkadot uh, and other projects like that. Um, so that's why we suggested this pivot over into something that is extremely exciting. Uh, and we're, we're nailing on execution and delivery on proof verification. So that's how a Horizon maintains credibility over time is by actually doing, making consistently rational decisions to change if things aren't working out. Now, like we can lament and say, ah, oh, too bad things didn't work out. We should have still been a privacy coin. Why aren't we competing with Zcash? Well, the community didn't want to, right? And we voted on that. Um, then we went to Zendu and cool technology didn't find product market fit. I've already explained that. Very transparent and open about it. But now we have very much Uh, product market fit with ZK proof verification and we're leading that market guys. We are some of the first to get out there in the market. And if we move fast enough, we're going to be the first to actually launch into production. Um, but that's a long journey for us. We were the first to test that with it. Um, will we be the first to man? I don't know. There's different implementations that some easier than what we're doing with it. Um, uh, but we have to move fast and we have to be relevant. And that's the point of how Zen is going to stay relevant. Now, again, whether we call that Zen or we call it a new token or we call it an upgraded new Zen, I, I almost don't care. Like the point is that we need to deliver a relevant like functionality that's relevant for this market and then think about the right tokenomics so the functionality can be successful. Thank you, Rob. Other question. How does the team plan to maintain Zen's value and investor confidence? Uh, amid potential increases in supply or new token issuance linked to the modular blockchain platform? And what will be the gas fee on New Horizon? Yeah, so it, again, it depends which route we take. If we wanted to say, like, and, and this was uh, originally my preferred option. My preferred option was that we have a new Zen token. And the new Zen token has a greater supply than the current Zen token. And that new incremental supply is used for the success of the proof verification platform. Um, now, if we were to do that, it would be it, it would be um, it would greatly increase the chances of the success of that platform relative to the competitors in the market. Um, that's how you have credibility on it. Now, we're not sure as a community because, um, you know, there were some very strong opinions. And again, I can't tell if the people who are being loudest on Telegram or Discord really represent the, the, the broad community or if this is a, a subset. But the subset was very strongly opposed to increasing the Zen supply, basically doing a new Zen token. Like I, I think if we did a new Zen token with a greater supply and that new supply is allocated towards the system to make it successful, I think it speaks for itself. And I think it would be a massively successful project and, and token. If we have to do a new token because the community doesn't want to you know, increase the supply is then, okay, so be it. We can create a new token and link the two tokens. But the point is the tokenomics have to match whatever is required to make the platform successful. We don't live in a vacuum. We don't get to just, you know, make up reality where like we, we just stick with old tokenomics and pretend that that's going to be successful when we have three to five amazing competitors gunning for exactly the same market who have optimized token structures. So, so that's my view on it, guys. I, I can have an opinion on which of these options I prefer, but I can tell you that either, either of those last two options, whether we do like a new Zen token or we do a brand new token and don't call it Zen and just link it to old Zen, either one of those, I know that we can be successful here competing in this one segment. 
And Rob, are there any negotiations with major exchanges like Binance and OKX for relisting uh, or removing tags? And what impact might these developments have on Zen's market position? Of course there are, absolutely. Um, so I, I, I can tell you um, we are in literally daily contact with exchanges, all of the major exchanges. They are very much updated and aware that we removed all privacy features back in February. Again, in response to this community being pissed off that they weren't removed yet, and we moved really fast. Like within a month, we had uh, you know the code done, implemented, and pushed out to a hard fork, and we up we upgraded the system so that it it um, ameliorated some of the concerns of the exchanges. Those concerns have been have been solved at this point. Like you guys have to realize how exchanges work; they're businesses servicing hundreds of different projects simultaneously. And they have schedules like it. They're not here to cater to every single whim of every single community member. They might be pissed off that some you know tag hasn't been removed yet. They're servicing hundreds of projects and we submit all of our information so that they're aware of where we are. Then they have, um, you know, um, regular committees on their end where they get together, you know, periodically. And most of them do this on a quarterly basis. They get together and they review all of their action items from all the projects that they're servicing. And we're definitely in the in the queue for that. Definitely, like our team is extremely responsive, and we're talking to high level people at the major exchanges and the working level people in Telegram chats that we maintain like on an ongoing basis. The community had a few questions related to uh, marketing and and tech strategy. Um, the first one: Why has there been a recent shift towards recognizing the need for real incentives for KOL and influencers? And what strategies are planned to engage these groups effectively and increase the social engagement? You know, I, I'll, I'll just say something quick and then uh, Gustavo is, actually is a marketing expert, so I'll, I'll defer to him here. But I will say that, that it's extremely frustrating, guys. We have Zen that is out there. It's an OG token that's been out there since 2017. And it's a 100% mineable token. Every Zen that exists has been mined. And cool, that means... It was a completely fair launch the way it was done, kind of like Bitcoin from the, you know, the, the perspective of how coins could actually be launched. And, and by the way, none of them are launched that way these days anymore, guys. Um, so we have that benefit of being an OG token that had a fair launch. But what it means is that we don't have a large token supply that we just allocate to a whole bunch of KOLs and other people to promote the project. All right, that's what others do these days when they launch. Um, so part of that is, and we do have a treasury, guys, and the treasury over the years has largely gone towards development. We've worked on some really high-end technology initiatives and we fund plenty of marketing initiatives and people always kind of ignore the, the marketing wins that we have. Like just go and you know, Google all the Coindesk articles that we have on the project and, and the other PR placements. But what we haven't done historically is fund, or I mean, we have to some extent, but I mean, it's kind of ebbed and flowed, uh, funded a whole bunch of KOLs to go do a ton of marketing for us. But that's the point of, you know, like, like when new projects launch, they have token allocations that go towards people who's, who are incentivized to promote an ecosystem. And now here, like there are different ways, like some more scrupulous than others, but we're extremely careful with how we do anything. As uh, you know, as, as I can tell you from the Horizon Labs perspective, we don't even launch tokens. All we do is advise and you know, make recommendations and promote uh, certain research on how to best practices. But like typically projects allocate supplies to exchanges, to market makers, to drive volume, to drive liquidity, to like make sure that projects are actually get out there and supported. But I mean, anyway, I, I'm sort of out of my depth here because Gustavo is actually the marketing expert. So I'd like to hear his thoughts. I think you pretty much covered everything, Rob. And I've witnessed in firsthand the challenges that we've been having on the marketing side just because we don't have the funds and we are not like as well resourced as most of these projects. So I've been saying that and I see it in firsthand how the token economics, for example, impacts our ability to to do like the proper marketing with the different KOLs and influencers. And I'll pass it back to you, Herbie. So another question, considering the challenges and the market dynamics, why is dilution considered necessary for attracting VC investment? And how can this approach benefit Zen in the long term? 
Yeah, I mean, you could say uh, VC investment, but the, the more appropriate term is um, incentivizing people to support your ecosystem. And, and those like VCs are one group. It's nice because they all come with very large entrenched Web3 um, um, networks that we could be part of and they would support us. Just like, I mean, how many people in this community over the years have been ecstatic that DCG supports us? We're talking about getting like another 25 DCGs into the ecosystem. Like, how is that ever a bad thing? Right. So just having we've gotten to where we are having the support of like one major um, you know, organization that we all love, right? But what if we had 25 others and think about the support? But it goes beyond VCs, guys. VCs are just one stakeholder group, but there's tons of others. There's exchanges. There are, you know, like imagine doing like a launch pad launch uh, of like a, you know, a, a new token related to Zen here, uh, but a new token nonetheless for this proof verification system. That's potentially tens of millions of new users coming into our, our community and ecosystem. Um, there's, um, you know, market makers, there are KOLs, there are many other, like, you know, uh, stakeholders within Web3 that could really support our ecosystem and support many other ecosystems, right? So that, that was the idea here. It's not only for VCs, even though I would love to get like another 25 DCGs into Horizon. And uh, what, what is the timeline and strategy for transitioning to proof of stake and implementing new airdrops? How will these changes affect Zen holders directly? Guys, it's going to depend on the DAO, but I will say we have to move fast because our competitors could care less about our, our politics. Like they're racing to get to market and we have to get to market as well. And if we want to be competitive, we have to move extremely fast. Um, so again, we're moving re very fast on the technology side. I think now, you know, for for as much hell as this uh, Zen IP has unleashed in the community, it's actually a good thing. And someone said this yesterday that we've probably not had this much uh, engaged conversation as a community in years. Uh, so this is phenomenal from that sense. But I think we have to move really fast, guys. That's why I'm really happy that you know, for better or worse, the conversation has kicked off, and now we have to make decisions quickly. But we can move as fast as this community can. So if this community can make decisions tomorrow, we'll uh, we'll work with that, and we'll we'll start delivering at an even accelerated pace. So guys, think about that. Think about as fast as we can deliver on the the politics and the community side for decisions is as fast as we can move. You know, with you know, I'll, I'll just say Horizon Labs supporting us, and I know the foundation supporting us as well. Um, so we have organizations here that are mature and we can move fast, but we need to make decisions as a community. So I think I believe this covered most of the questions from the community. Um, so on, on behalf of the, the special council, I think we've we've reviewed uh, all of them. Um, uh, Rob and, and Gustavo, maybe uh, uh, to, to close off the, the CMA, maybe some some last comments. I'll defer to Gustavo first. Sure. So I'll speak as a community member here. So as a community member, I pretty much agree with uh, Rob's vision for what we want to do with uh, the proof verification layer. And uh, but ultimately, it's the, the community decision to decide. So I think we need to take a swift action. So time is of essence here. So I encourage everyone to continue the discussion on discourse and on Discord so we can move as soon as possible. And that's all. Back to you, Arvi. Cool. Well, maybe I'll, I'll, um, I'll add a couple of things, Gustavo. Thank you for that. I, I will say that um, some of the community conversation has been a little toxic, guys, and you know who you are, if, that, if that's been you. And other parts of the, the conversation, even though they may have been in a disagreement, that's awesome because we have to get the thoughts out there and disagreeing is still a sign that we're participating. Um, I highly recommend though, for anyone who really cares about this project to get into the community, um, get into the conversation, whether that's on discord or telegram or discourse, put like, make your opinions known, listen to all of the facts, listen to all of the opinions and have an opinion of your own and support what you want to support. Um, that's going to be the key for us moving forward here, because if all we're seeing is just a handful of kind of people acting immaturely and disrespectfully on these platforms, how are we going to be able to make a decision? Of course, we'll put things to vote and we'll find out then. 
but it's really important for just the the health the health of the discourse, not the the converse, health of the conversation, not the platform discourse. Uh, for the health of the conversation, that we all make our opinions known and as thoughtful a way as possible. So do your own research. Talk to any of us, right? Like Gustavo and I are here to answer questions, and I've been doing that. Um, but you know, we, we've also been fielding just a, a ton of immature, um, like toxic commentary that dilutes the actual conversation that needs to happen. But guys, one way or another, I'll just wrap this up by saying uh, I can speak for Horizon Labs and I can speak for myself as a community member here. Uh, I'm not going anywhere and the company is not going anywhere. We are committed to this ecosystem and we're going to make sure that this phenomenal technology that we're delivering that's getting a ton of traction out there already on the business side is going to support Horizon one way or another. And now it's just a matter of let's have that conversation to figure out which path makes the most sense. Thank you, Rob. And, and on behalf of the community and the, the special counsel, thank you for coming on this uh, AMA. And uh, thank you, Gustavo, uh, also for, for being part of it. Uh, I think that uh, wraps it up. So thank you, everybody, for participating. And um, we will, um, you know, please engage on the, the different uh, um, social medias to communicate uh, with special counsel and with the uh, the Horizon Foundation, and uh, we look forward to uh, speaking again uh, very soon. Thank you, everyone. Take care, bye. Bye, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Gustavo. Take care.